Okay, going forward, we have our buildings generated, our frames per second is back to normal now that we've put everything into an efficient instant mesh. We are going to, I'm just trying to see how everything looks on both ends of the spectrum. Looks like a quiet suburbia area. So, I'm going to make sure that I have enough splines for my road so I have a good curve in my road before I place this down. Some of it's going on the land, that's okay because we're about to bake that information. That curve's a little bad, so we get 20. Actually, I might need to do less than that. There we go. This actually looks okay. Set it back down to five. If you put too many on there, the road will actually kind of bulk on into itself. I'm just using the mesh blind, which I've had some off and on results with. It hasn't always worked the best for me. But I'm probably doing something a little bit inaccurate with it that I can probably change later to get some kind of better results. Um, my frame rate is this low right now because I have the building selected. I've actually noticed that if you have something selected with a lot of geometry, I guess highlighting the information actually causes a slowdown. But I've had good efficiency with this. So what we're about to do now is actually apply the spline information that we have for each of the buildings, for each of the, for under the buildings, as well as on the side of the buildings, we'll have to add the terrain information to it so we can get a nice smooth transition for all of this. I think at this point I might need to move the buildings back a little bit because I see some of those stairs are actually overlapping the the road spline. So building width, that's terrain information. Okay, so we have building spacing, we have street spacing. I'm actually going to change this to probably 6,000. And I do believe now that I've baked, I'm have to, I will have to reset this back to proxy. Give it a second. All right. So now that it's back to proxy. I can go in and space the buildings apart. I see something that I kind of don't like here. There's a mansion here. And it seems like it may have an overlapping issue, but you can't fully tell until you actually get the actual building there. So what I'm going to do real quick is I was looking for my RNG, which I probably moved to another area. There you go. And I'm just going to modify my RNG which will give us different buildings depending on what random number you put in here or what random seed, should I say, that you're putting in here. And I still have a good, a good cluster of buildings right here at the point where I just don't want them to be. They're just too close together. I'm gonna increase the building spacing I think it's about 3,000. I still have that mansion right there on that piece. Three. That should do it. Let me check the rest of the area. All right, every, nothing else seems that crazy. We actually have a mansion on the top of, at the very top of the hill, which is kind of desired, I guess. Mansions seem like they should be pretty high in the thing, you know. 
if you believe in that social status BS. Um, so let's go and generate. The editor really doesn't like when you heavily create and destroy objects. There was a memory leak at one time, and now I'm gonna bake. Uh, that seems pretty far. <sighs> Just for the test purposes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it like that, but I can be OCD about the spacing and things like that at some other point, but you'll get the general idea of how this is gonna work. All right, so now that we're at our dormant state, uh, I might wanna explain this real quick. When you actually change these states, when you click generate, it pauses and it will automatically send the drop down to the next state once it's actually done. So when you click um, when you click proxy, it destroys everything. When you click generate, it will generate all the tiles for all the buildings, and then automatically go to tweaking. You should never have to click tweaking state. Same, um, likewise with bake. Once you click bake, it will bake all the information that's that was generated in the generating state, and then automatically go to dormant. You should never have to click tweaking or dormant state. And if anything, just always start at proxy, go to generate, and then from generate to bake. All right, so now we're on our dormant, our dormant state. We'll modify our road. For some reason, when you generate, it does not bring the road back until you actually change some kind of parameter. So I'm gonna have to fix that at some point. And now let's select our terrain that we're actually going to modify. I'm gonna say this, I have this pretty much everywhere in documentation, things like that. But when you use the tool to apply terrain settings, you have to make sure that you know that it cannot be undone. Unlike the spline editing tool that's in the terrain, when you actually apply this settings with the, the spline to terrain function uh, blueprint object, it cannot be undone. And the only way you can actually undo it is if you go to your terrain, you right click and go to export file. And this will actually save your current height map for your terrain. So any edits and things like that you've done, it will be saved for you to re-import. And if this does not apply the way that you like it, or if it does some kind of craziness to where you've put something where it's just completely horribly destroyed your terrain, and you don't want that, you can always go in and reload that after the fact. But I'm not gonna do that because I'm just going to wing it. And I'm assuming that it's going to pretty much flatten out some of this area where the tree is. It's going to pull up the terrain over in the middle where I made the arch. And if I select my building path, I set my landscape here for the um, terrain target. For the, the road width, it's going to use a thousand for the actual road. And then the fall off, it's going to be a thousand. For underneath the building, I'm gonna have it 3,000 for the width of the building. That for some for some buildings, depending on how wide you have, 3,000 may not be enough. You might have to make that wider. But we're just gonna go with the default settings, and we're going to click Apply Terrain. So now, if we look here, so if I can slow down this, if you see here, we've pulled the terrain up into the actual spline information it's not exactly it's not exactly how we want it because it's a little bit 
instant at some of these points. Don't map, don't worry about the the grass placement. For some reason, when you edit the terrain, the grass information doesn't always update. But if we look through here, we can see that we have this here. So, hmm, and we have some bubbling going on. I'm going to expand some of these settings. The road fall off, I'm going to make it I'm actually going to bring this in. I'm going to make this 2000. I'm going to make the fall off 2000 as well. The building width looks kind of okay because it looks like it's for the back and the front of the building it's pretty flat oh geez yeah we gotta expand this out it didn't even push this terrain down at all yeah we gotta expand the fall off a lot Gonna make that 5,000 and reapply. See if we can get something nice and smooth. All right, that looks a lot better. No beveling, it covered everything up. Let's see, might be a little bit too much because it's impeding onto the actual building itself. The way this works, it, it flattens out the information under the building first and then the center terrain. I mean, then the center road. So if your road overlaps the building, it could push things down under the building. Well, it could push the information above or under the building, depending on where the road is in reference to the building. So I'm just going to back this up a little bit to 3000. Update the terrain. It's a little bit closer. Pull this back a little. 2000 was actually probably a good number from before. A little bit more, 1,005. All right, so. So now we have slight hill. The terrain matches the building. Check out the back of the building. We kind of have a steep, steep, steep cliff here in the back. That'll be okay for now. Going to the side of the building, making sure everything looks good. Let's go up here to the higher land. See how everything looks up here. That looks pretty flat. We have a whole little. Oops. It's almost kind of hard to see because we have the, the floating splines and it's messing up my eyesight. Okay, that looks pretty good. We have some of the map overlay affecting the actual automatic terrain, but that's okay for right now. All right, so that looks good except for the grass. So I'm going to deselect this. We're going to slowly get our frames per second back. And I need to actually update the grass to make this force update the placement of the grass sections. And since I'm using my auto terrain texture, it needs to also look at the newly created field information and slopes to be able to apply the correct grass and things like that to the terrain. So if I can think again, let's go here. I have to change a value in here. Let's change this to 20. Force that's the update. And we need to force update the grass <coughs> I mean the forest area so I'll just change that to 11 so now everything recalculated 
Okay, that can be painted. I thought I had texture for this for a second. Let's select this a little bit. This, um, another thing is, everything is parented still to this um, path builder. So as long as you don't mess up any of the, the linkage, anytime you have to come back and recreate anything or just re-simulate something, to regenerate the path, you should be good for the cleaning up process. I thought I had a terrain material. A trail. I can't spell. Trail material. There we go. This may not be the best in the world, but it's something. It's kind of stretched. Let's see if I can add some more iterations. 10, 20, that's too much. 15, that's what I was talking about, the bulking. I do not know what caused this to bulk out because all I'm saying is make these many meshes across this spline and apparently I have it too high and it's causing it to bulk at the, the center. Well, the, uh, the overlapping area so now we have grass that's going in between the underneath the terrain this part is actually under I can add a spline here and pull that up a little bit my spline went kind of wonky here I'm being a little OCD about this, but I'm just trying to show the general process of tweaking this because I know I haven't covered this in the past when I've released this, uh, when I released this for uh, experiment sake. So at least I can show off how to use it and how to tweak it and things like that here. I'm gonna lower this back to the ground. There we go. Let's just smooth that out. And I can go in and paint trail information under here so that way it can get rid of the grass. Just get rid of the grass all under there just by painting trail information. So that way everything can just blend together properly without grass coming up through the mesh. It's a pretty thick mesh. It's probably not the best thing to use in the world. I know the examples use like a flat plane, but that's just the theory. All right, let's see. I have a spike here. That to 11. There we go. But that's pretty much it for creating this here. And this usually just you needs its own little tweaks and things like that to be able to apply everything better. But you get the gist of how everything is working for this so you can come in and do whatever you need to do to make everything work correctly and i really messed up that spline but i'm going to end this here and clean this up and once I finish this, I'll come back with the next video for adding more stuff to this. NPCs, enemies, and things like that. Thank you.